Today we begin a brand new series on a fun subject, so Pastor Mark gets to be up for today. I already heard the message once, super good, so no, really. That's very kind of you to say. I pay him to say that, so (laughs) it's all good. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome everybody in the house. Welcome everybody online. It's uh, great to have everyone be able to gather together in the Lord's house today. We are starting this uh, first Sunday in September, the month of September, a new series that's called Multiply. And the concept is that sometimes when things don't add up, it's actually a good thing. We're going to learn that when God is in the equation, we actually end up with way more than we ever expected. So that's the basic principle of this. Now, some of you who are long-time churchgoers, you might recognize some of these sermons as stewardship sermons. I got a big groan at the first service. That's good. All right. So if you're not familiar with that word, great. Don't worry about it because it's got a lot of baggage with it. So we're not going to worry about that. Here's the main point. How can we fulfill our calling and our purpose as God's children, his beloved children? How can we do that? And so today, the very first topic, we're going to talk about how God must be first. We're talking about multiplying and the equation. Uh, God's got to be the first, call it a variable if it's mathematics, but he's constant, right? He, God is constant, the first piece of all of our equations. And we're going to go way back to the Old Testament. So i got to warn you that the Bible verses today are a little... Old Testament-ish, and you'll get what I mean right away. Exodus chapter 13, the first two verses, the Lord is talking to Moses, and the Lord says, consecrate to me every firstborn male. The first offspring of every womb among the Israelites belongs to me, whether human or animal. So way, way, way back millennia ago, God establishes this, we're going to call it a principle, uh, this principle that goes throughout all of Scripture about the importance of what comes first in our lives, and well, in everything, what comes first. And uh, he gets a little more detailed, uh, verses 12 and 13. You are, to go, uh, you are to give over to the Lord the first offspring of every womb, All the firstborn males of your livestock belong to the Lord. Redeem with a lamb every firstborn donkey, but if you do not redeem it, break its neck. Whoa, what is this? Is uh, is God not like animals, or is this some kind of dark side of God we see every now and then in the Old Testament? What in the world is going on here? Again, we're talking about how God must be first. And he's very insistent about this point. Uh, And if you think about God, the definition, I mean, he is the preeminent one. He's the tops, right? He is the best. He's set apart, wholly, totally different than anything else in all creation. And he's saying, I'm number one. You always remember that. Every day, remember that. Remind your family of that as they grow up. Now, what are we talking about these animals? A donkey is an unclean animal. And uh, let me just give you a little background here. So you have clean animals, you have unclean animals. Don't worry about what's what. Uh, but what we do know is Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 that everything in the Old Testament serves as an example for us today. So everything in the Old Testament, it really happened. These are historical accounts. Yet God was able to orchestrate the lives and obviously uh, what he told his prophets and priests to write down. But all of that was organized for us so that they would be examples for us today. Now, if you remember the principle that we learned in Exodus 13, if an animal was unclean, It had to be redeemed by the sacrifice of a clean animal, right? And if it's a clean animal, it has to be sacrificed. I'm going to say it again. All right. 
So if you have horses, unclean animal, and one of your horses gives birth, firstborn to this mare, whether it's a colt or a foal, right? It belongs to the Lord. Well, you can't sacrifice an unclean animal, so you have to sacrifice a clean animal to redeem the unclean animal. And if you have a clean animal, say a lamb, it's firstborn, you sacrifice it. Again, you dedicate it, you consecrate it to the Lord as the first, the first gifts. And everything in the Bible is an example to us. Everything in the Bible points to Jesus. So let me ask you a question. Were you born clean or unclean? Unclean. Right? David tells us that we were all born sinful. We were born sinful and unclean. And do you remember the principle? For something that is born unclean, it must be redeemed by the sacrifice of something that is clean. So let me ask you another question. Was Jesus born clean or unclean? Clean. There's that principle of the first. Right? God's firstborn son, first and only begotten son, sacrificed for the lives of all of the unclean people to redeem us from the death that we deserve. Separation from God, death, all of the bad things in the world today brought about because of our own sins. And then the, that verse 13 finishes up with uh, the children too even. Redeem the firstborn among your sons as well. We're talking about God must be first. And he's giving his people and Israel, this Old Testament people, uh, these practices, well, maybe today we could call them spiritual disciplines, right? to teach them, to train them, to remind them that God is first. God comes first in our lives. So we're talking about the principle of the first. The very first lesson that we learn from this is that the first must be sacrificed or redeemed. Now, you think about what God did for us in Jesus Christ. Again, his first and only son. See, God didn't wait to see if we were going to straighten up and deserve his grace and forgiveness. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God gave us Jesus before we believed in Jesus. He gave us Jesus before we even knew about Jesus. And that's one of the great blessings of living centuries now after the death and the resurrection of Jesus is that we can see that before we were even born, God had already accomplished this plan. He'd put it into place even centuries before that. It's already been accomplished. And now this free gift to us that we have witnessed, we've seen how much God loves us. He gives us our absolute, his absolute first and his absolute best. And so we, I mean, if somebody gives you their first and their best, I mean, what's the natural response to that? Well, I'm going to give them my first and best, right? Just out of thanksgiving, just out of gratefulness. And so here is the thing about the first must be sacrificed to redeem. When you give your first, the rest will be blessed. Here we are on Sunday morning, the first day of the week. You give your first time of the week to God, and I'm telling you, the rest will be blessed. You get up tomorrow morning, and every morning after that, and you spend some time with God in prayer, or you read a couple of verses out of the Scripture and pray. You give your first part of the day to God, and I'm telling you from experience, the rest is blessed tremendously. And yet, it works for our finances too. When we give the first portion, whatever that is, to God, the rest is blessed. It happens every time. So I'd encourage you to experiment with this. Now, you're here today, you're watching online. 
might be Monday or Tuesday, I guess, possibly if you're online, but um, you're giving the first part of the week to the Lord, and the rest is going to be blessed. Now, on uh, tomorrow morning, the next morning, the next morning. Now, I'm not asking you to, to spend, you know, two hours and try to read the Bible in a month. And No, start with five minutes. Just give five minutes to God. It's not about how much, okay? This sermon is not about how much. This sermon is about prioritizing God in our lives, right? Fulfilling our calling and purpose as children of God. So five minutes every morning. And you know how easy it is today to do this, to get into this habit? Pull out your iPhone and say, Hey, Siri, remind me every morning to have a devotion. Oh, it worked at the first. Somebody's phone went off. <laughs> that was pretty good. Ah, I thought it might happen here. You guys are good, though. You got your phones on mute. All right, all right. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Okay, first time for everything. But that's how easy it is, right? And finances, too. I don't care how much you give. That's between you and God. I'm not a part of that conversation. You pray about that. But what I'm saying is, if it's the first, the rest is going to be blessed. Now, second part of this principle, the principle of the first. Again, this theme throughout all the scripture is that the first fruits must be offered. And I'm going to put the emphasis on must be. The first fruits must be offered. God must be first. I'll give you a couple of scriptures. Exodus 23, 10 chapters later. Uh, Bring the best of the first fruits of your soil to the house of the Lord your God. The best, right? Not the leftovers. Not the stuff, well, I don't like this. I don't want that. I don't like broccoli. I don't, you know, give that if you're in the farming business. Whatever it is. The best of your first fruits to the Lord. Proverbs 3 we read today. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops, then your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine. If you give the first to God, the rest is going to be blessed. Blessed beyond anything you could possibly imagine. Remember, we're talking about multiplying. When God's in the equation, the result, the answer is going to be way more than what you would expect. And I guarantee it's way more than you could ever do on your own. That's with your time and your money. Let's go back to time for an example. Some days I've got a, a busy schedule just like you do. I got all these things on my calendar and I got to run a kid to somewhere else back and make a meeting at night. And I get up in the morning and I'm like, oh, I don't have time for a devotion today. I got to get out the door and hit the ground running. And I'm telling you from experience, that day ends up being more chaotic and more stressful and more pressed for time than if I just took five or ten minutes to start my day, and I've, I've done this, I've done it both ways, and I'm, I'm just telling you, the rest of the day is blessed when you give that first piece to God. And that's what he's talking about here. So, you know, Proverbs 3, the famous verses of 4 and 5, trust in the Lord, lean not on your own understanding, right? Our understanding is that, well, if I give a little bit to God, I've got less to work with, time or money. But the reality is, if we give a little bit to God, he multiplies it, and the rest is blessed. Now, here's why uh, the first is so important. I'm not, again, I don't care about how much time you spend, how much money you give. It's not the point. It's not the point. The first is what's important because giving your first takes what? That takes faith. You see, God didn't send you know, hold Jesus back and say, well, let's see what these people are going to do here. Or he didn't tell his people in the Old Testament, okay, now, when your sheep, when she has ten offspring, then give me the tenth one. That doesn't take any faith. There's zero faith to do that. God says, when your sheep has a baby, you give me the first one, and the rest will be blessed. See, that takes faith, because you don't know. You've got to trust in God. Such a great spiritual discipline for growing our faith. And, and this is throughout Scripture. I could give, I spend all day. Actually, I got a lot of time. No, I'm kidding. I'll just give you one more example. How This is throughout Scripture, this principle that God must be first. So right after Moses led Israel 
Joshua took over. And Joshua led them into the promised land. The promised land is filled with enemies. But God was going to give it into their hands because they were, they were pagans and they mocked God and they abused them. God was going to defeat all these enemies. Okay, well, when they come to the city of Jericho, you probably know this story because the walls fall down, right? You know that. Uh, well, in Joshua 6, God says, give me all the silver and gold in Jericho. Now, why would God say, give me all of the silver and gold in Jericho? It's because of this principle. Jericho was the first city that they conquered. See, God didn't say, well, you go in the promised land, you conquer ten cities, and you just kind of give me one of them. He said, no, you give me all of the first, and the rest will be blessed. Now, what happened, unfortunately for Israel is that they didn't give it all. Someone kept some for themselves. And so they went, when the army marched to the second city, which was called Ai, A-I, uh, and Michelle, I don't know how it's really pronounced in Hebrew. We'll just say Ai. Ai? Who knows? Nobody knows. They went to the second city, and it wasn't blessed. They couldn't conquer it. The army had to tuck tail and run. This is a principle throughout Scripture, and don't think that God has changed today. God is God. He is preeminent. He's given us his first and best, and he wants us to give him his first and best. Now, the third point, the last point, is about, is about money, tithing. And that is the same thing. The tithe, it must be first. Leviticus 27, a tithe of everything from the land, whether grain from the soil or fruit from the trees, belongs to the Lord. It is holy to the Lord. That means it's consecrated to the Lord. It's set apart. This, is, this belongs to God. And you can give it to him or not, but just like the donkey, uh, you can sacrifice it or just break its neck. Either way, you're going to lose it. So probably better to give it to God. Now, what do you mean uh, the tithe must be first? Let me give you another example. Let's say you got a little business. You do a little landscaping on the weekends. You come over to my house. I got like a half day uh, project for you to do some plants and shrubs and things. And uh, after I pay for the plants and the soil and pay for your helper, your laborer that you've got with you, uh, you give me, you charge me like another two hundred dollars. It's kind of like that's your profit. So you make two hundred dollars on the job, right? So that is going to be uh, ten. $20 bills. Open here. Right? Right? Ten $20 bills. Oh, now, these aren't mine. <laughs> I don't have this. I had to borrow this from Pastor Jeremy, actually. <clears throat> and I think he said he's charging me interest, so we've got to move this along there by the hour. But, all right, so I pay you $200. I pay you ten $20 bills. I'm ask you two questions. Now, the first question is... Uh, i got to fan these out better. There's more in there. Uh, there's a, how much is a, how much is a tithe? Yeah, tw 20 bucks, 10%. So actually, that's, maybe you didn't know that. Another Hebrew word, uh, masar, I think that's how they say it. Uh, masar, you say masar? There you go. It's, um, it, it's a number. That's what's interesting. You, you kind of think, it, is it a gift? Does it mean... Does it mean offering? No, it means a number like 22 or 500. The number is one-tenth. That's the number. So you give one-tenth. But again, I'm going to say this again uh, about the tithe. That's, that, is not a, that is not a New Testament church kind of thing. We don't talk about how you have to give a tithe. You don't have to do that. I just want to make that very clear. Because Paul actually said in, in Corinthians, Paul, St. Paul, he also said that we as now have seen Jesus with our own eyes, died and risen, uh, we're actually free from this law to give way more than the tithe. That's what, that's what Paul said. He did um, something to that. But, uh, okay, so you got $200, uh, and we're just going to use 10% because it's simple math, all right? Uh, and then so uh, we said 10% uh, 10, 10 would be $20. Okay, $20. So I'm going to give $20 uh, to the Lord. Uh, 
Now, which one of these $20 bills do I give to the Lord? Mm -hmm. Okay. The first one. Somebody said the first one because you're listening to the sermon. Good job. Okay. How do I know which one is the first one? I'll tell you. This is how. It's the first one to leave your hand. Huh? It's the first one that leaves your bank account. Now, what you can't do is take the $200 you earned from me, go home, say, Ooh, I'm having steak dinner tonight, and uh, go out for ice cream after that, and uh, pay a cell phone bill, and I'll do uh, this, and you'll and then you get to Sunday mornings tomorrow. Wait a second. I'm going to church tomorrow. Uh-oh. I didn't leave anything. I didn't leave anything for God. Or even if you did, even if you did still have 20 bucks, that's still not the tithe. That's not first, right? The tithe must be first. And again, it's not about the money. It's about us learning to trust God and this is important. Every time you get paid, every time you get income from your retirement account, every time God blesses you with income, you take a test. Did you know that? You take a test, and the test is, whom are you going to honor for your income? Well, it's not the steak restaurant. They didn't do anything to bless me with income. I'm not going to give them my first. It's not the mortgage company or the, anything else. Right? We're going to honor God with our first. First day of the week. First few minutes every morning. First pennies. I don't even care. I'm challenging you right now for a month, for a year. Right? Give God your first and watch how incredibly blessed that you're going to be. It's amazing. First of your time, first of your talents, first of, again, I can't say this enough because I feel awkward talking about money and you feel awkward probably. Some people, church going to, and churches have gotten bad reputations. God, I know it. Bad reputations for talking about money, doing horrible things. Okay, this is not about the amount, not about me. I... We're on salary. We don't get commission, do we? No. So we don't care. We don't care how much you get. Mark and Jeremy don't care. But what I'm telling you is your pastor is the shepherd of us, your souls. I'm telling you, this is one of the most powerful ways that we can grow in our faith because we learn to trust God. We give God our first. It doesn't take any faith to give last, right? But it does take God, uh, a lot of faith to give first and then trust that God is going to bless us to be able to pay our mortgage and pay the car and pay the credit card and pay the cell phone and have money to go on a vacation and save a little bit, right? I'm telling you, it's, it works. Now, going back to Joshua, uh, somebody that was in his army was named Achan. And Achan, uh, after the battle of Jericho, uh, stole some of the gold and the silver and hid it in his tent. He put it in his own bank account. And God said in Joshua 6, this is uh, sacred, this is dedicated, bring it to the temple. This belongs, the gold and silver belong to me. And if you give it to me, if you give the first to me, then it is blessed. And if you don't, then it is cursed. Now, I'm not a smart man, but... Uh, given the option, I think I'd rather be blessed, right? I think I'd rather be blessed. Okay, let me go back to Exodus 13. Last thing, we'll finish it up. Uh, verse 14. In days to come, when your son asks you, what does this mean? Say to him, with a mighty hand, the Lord brought us out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. When Pharaoh stubbornly refused to let us go, the Lord killed the firstborn of both people and animals in Egypt. This is why I sacrifice to the Lord the first male offspring of every womb and redeem each of my firstborn sons. Now I want you to kind of picture 
this scene with me. Uh, this is time of Exodus, is Old Testament times. Guy's got a herd of sheep. And he's got a son who's pretty young, right, growing up with the family. He's pretty young. His son uh, is with him. And he comes, you know, comes running. Dad, 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 the sheep is about to deliver. The sheep is about to deliver. Oh, and, and, and their sheep delivers its, its firstborn. And Dad says, son, I want you to take the firstborn lamb out behind the shed, cut its throat, destroy it, and burn it. And the son, he's young at this point, so he says, you know, yes, sir. He goes away, he didn't know, understand, but he's like, well, I know one thing, I'm never going to cross Dad, right? <laughs> Don't you think that did a lot to help discipline kids back then? Probably. But listen, the boy grows up, he's getting a little older, and he's kind of, he's coming into the family business. And finally, one day, it's driving him crazy. And he goes to his dad. He says, Father, I need to talk to you about something. Um, you know, we're in the ranching business, you know? And, uh, Dad, you've, you've developed some habits that are really helpful to the prophet. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you noticed this or not, Dad, but Every time one of our animals has their firstborn, uh, baby, you, you have me kill it. Now, we're, we are losing money on this. What, what is going on here? And so Exodus 13, God is telling you, when your son comes to you and asks you, why are we doing this? Take your son aside and say, son, I need to tell you something that I've never told you before. You see, son, we weren't always in the ranching business. At one time, we were slaves. We didn't own any sheep, didn't own any land, didn't own any tents. We didn't own anything. But God, with a mighty hand, delivered us from the bondage of slavery and set us free in the land flowing with milk and honey and established our families and our name and our nation upon the earth and blessed us tremendously. And that son, that son is why I gladly give my first and my best to God. Now, I learned much about good stewardship from my grandmother. My grandmother, I watched, she tithed to her church, and on top of that, she would give generously to charities and ministries and missionaries all over the country, all over the world. And I saw how she was tremendously blessed. Now, let me say this about the blessings of God. Uh, this is not a sermon where, oh, uh, yeah, you give 20 bucks to me, and uh, next week God's going to give you $2,000. No, it doesn't work like that. Don't believe anybody that talks like that. But I'll say this. If the greatest things in life can't be bought with money, Probably some of the greatest blessings from God are not money. It's just not about that. It's about trusting God. So I am tremendously blessed, and I hope that my children see the same thing, that because God has, by a mighty hand, has delivered me from the grip of Satan, from the sin that entangled me, from the death and the hell that I deserve, and set me free and blessed me upon the earth and forever in heaven. And so, yes, I gladly respond to that, say thank you, God, by giving my first to God, of time and in finances. And I'm telling you, if you do this, if you try this, it will change your life. It'll change your children's life because it is a joy. I'm telling you, it is a joy to give our first to God and watch how incredibly blessed we are through it, because of it, and uh, our families. We must, please, we must put God first. Amen? Okay, amen. I invite you to stand for our closing prayer. Pastor Jeremy, I'll get this back to you as soon as I can. I'm going to put it in my pocket, though, for now, just for safekeeping. <laughs> Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you for giving your first and only son uh, for our life, for our salvation. 
And we pray that uh, we honor you with uh, making you first in our own lives, uh, the priority of our day, uh, the priority in our families, the priority in our jobs and our uh, relationships, uh, their neighbors and friends. And we get to share uh, how blessed we are because of your great love for us. And we get to share what a tremendous honor it is to, to be your children and to fulfill our purposes with you. Uh, for your blessings this week, Lord, we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, thanks for listening. Don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to our channel.